want you to lay your hand on the person next to you. Yeah. Folks, we're in a war. Amen. And the sad thing about sometimes is that we get caught up in the feel good of church and forget that we're in a battle. Yeah. And uh, and the problem with that is is that we lose sight of our ability to be offensive but it doesn't stop the enemy from being offensive. Yeah. And so we, we can go through what we believe is just the everyday of life and man we keep taking blow after blow. Yeah. It comes after us it comes after our spirit, it comes after our health, it comes after our mind, it comes after our relationships, it comes after our finances, and he just has no chill whatsoever in the way he comes after us. And I'm just going to tell you, man, it, I want you to, we're, we're going to, I guess, close this worship moment out in a prayer of investment, an offensive prayer for your neighbor I want you to pray with encouragement in their life I want you to pray and be led by the Holy Spirit to invest just a prayer a, a prayer of uplifting in their life because we, I'll be honest with you I think we take for granted sometimes in church that we have people around us that encourage us regularly and we oftentimes we don't and so I, this may be the only time this week coming out of this week and going into the next. This may be the only time this week that the person next to you has been encouraged in anything. But I believe that you're about to set something ablaze in their life through your investment of prayer that is not only going to break through the walls of what's been created from the previous week, but it's going to set a strength inside of them and a hope inside of them that will launch them forward in what's ahead. So I'm I, I just want us to pray. I want us to pray a, a, just a spirit of encouragement in this place today. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your encouragement. I thank you, God, that even in our darkest days, the sun still, still shines. I thank you, Father, that even though, Lord, we're fighting a war, God, Father, there's still the greatest warrior. There's still the greatest intercessor. There's still, Father, our greatest weapon that stands Warring for us, working for us, working, God, on our benefit and on our behalf. And I want to thank you this morning, God. Father, that although, God, everything around me has wanted to tear me down, God, and everything around me has attempted to discourage me, and the enemy, Father, has used ways and used situations and has used people and circumstances to bring an oppression and a depression to my life, God, you would not allow that to happen. Father, you shielded me with your grace. Father, you protected me with your covering, God. You set me, Father, in the footstool, God, of my enemies, God, and you lifted me high above them, God. And even in my darkest hour, God, Father, there was still hope in my life because of you. God, I declare it over your people this morning, God. Father, that everything they have walked in with, God, Father, now shall be broken in Jesus' name. That every chain that attempted to shackle them as they walked in this morning, now, God, it will be severed, Father. And I speak encouragement into their life, God. Father, for they even knew, God, if they knew what was inside of them, God, they would find hope in you this morning. If they knew the authority, God, that was on the inside of them, God, they would be encouraged to day. If they knew what lied ahead of the battle they're presently in, God, they would be excited, God, about fighting the war, God. And I pray today they lift their he head to the heels, God, and recognize the help, God, that stands before them. They would recognize the angels, God, that war for them. They would see the strategy, God, of the kingdom that's working on their benefit, God. And Father, we would celebrate, God, our way through the attack, God. We would praise our way through, Father, the adversity, God. We we would shout our way, God, through the obstacle, Lord, knowing, Father, that we serve a king that cannot be defeated. Hallelujah! You are the Lord of the breakthrough. Somebody shout breakthrough in this house today. Shout your way to encouragement today. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We praise your name. We praise your name. Oh, we praise your name. Thank you, God.
God for your encouragement. Thank you, Father, that there are more for me than those that are against me, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I lift you up. I need everybody that's married to come to this altar. Everybody that's married, engaged. Bring your spouse with you. Drag them if you have to. I don't care if the thing looks like it's all jacked up right now. Bring them anyway. If your spouse isn't here, come stand in for them anyway. You come on up. Make let's you guys kind of spread out and make some room. I'm absolutely sick that the enemy thinks that he can destroy this. I'm, I mean, I use some other language, but y'all probably walk me out of here. I'm just... I'm extremely, extremely frustrated. The enemy thinks that he can destroy what God put together. I'm sick of the attack on marriages. I'm just. Have you been? Have you been? I mean, have you just felt adversity, man, in your home, man? I'm just curious. The enemy knows how powerful you are together. I don't even know if I'll get to preach it today or not, but God did something pretty amazing in Genesis chapter 2. He said, He said, it's not good that man shall be alone. Now listen, now the word man there means humanity. It doesn't just refer to the male. It means humanity. He said, it's not good that man shall be alone. And that word, when you look at the translation of that word good, what it means is, is that he can't reach his full potential. You follow me? Yes, sir. He said, man, man doesn't even have the possibility of reaching his full potential alone. So I'm going to make him a helper that's comparable. And the word comparable uh, literally means opposite, opposite to, not opposite of in the sense of, of friction, but opposite to in the sense that equal, we fit together well. But he who finds a wife finds a good thing. When the order of the home can be established, God's blessings flow. This is the perfect representation of the magnificent trinity of the heavens. It is the most powerful thing in all of the earth. And the enemy knows that. He understood when God said it's not good for man to be alone. He understood what God meant. Not that, hey, you know what, they were just, it wasn't going to be great. They weren't going to have fun. It wasn't going to be enough pleasure, you know. He understood that there was potential locked inside of the both of you that when it came together, it would unleash something magnificent. And it's crazy, man, that from the very establishment of the very first marriage, that the enemy set out a strategy to divide them. Right. <clears throat> we couldn't even get two marriages. He started with the first one. <laughs> he said it's so powerful. See, here's what you got to understand is that he tried to divide the marriage in heaven. That's why he was kicked out. Yes. He tried to divide the unity that was in the heavens. Yes. He tried to establish his own vision. And God said, I ain't having none of that. Yes. What I put together, I ain't about no spirit of man to separate. So he kicked him out. God said, I'm going to set woman and man up to look just like me in heaven. And he went to work trying to divide it on earth just like he did in heaven. God wants your marriage to work. He doesn't just want your marriage to work, but he wants it to be good. And when he says good, he means maximizing everything that's locked inside of that.
I want you to look at the person that's next. Your spouse. Look at your spouse right now. Now here's what I need you to see for a minute. I don't need you to see the mountains of frustrations that you've had with each other because I know you've had them. I don't need you to see the division that you've had sometimes in your ideas. Yes. I don't need you to see the way that the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 that, that love keeps no wrong. It does not keep score. It is not boastful. It is not braggadocious. It is not prideful. So I, I need you to look at your spouse and not be selfish. Because when God made you and he made your spouse, he said, man, it's good. And he made an investment into you and he made an investment into you and he made an investment into you because his perspective said man that's good there ain't nothing more beautiful than that I don't care what man wants to say I don't care what the enemy tries to say there ain't nothing more beautiful than that and I need you to realize what's inside of the person that's holding hands with you right now representation of the kingdom of heaven could not even be properly manifest he said I'm gonna I, I'm gonna create man and build him in my image and I'm gonna give him dominion and authority and I'm allowing to rule and reign over everything that his feet tread upon and so but the, the thing is is that I want them to be I'm trying to give them everything I am I'm trying to give them my image but without each other they can't look like me Without each other, he says, I can't, I can't command them to be fruitful and multiply. Because alone, it's not possible. One has something that the other one needs. One has something, a gift locked on the inside of them that literally activates the best life of the one that's standing across from them. And when I put them together, if they ever had any, any, just any idea of what I see the possibility that's locked on the inside of them, man, if they could ever stop and start looking past the issues they have with one another and the faults they have with one another and the stresses and the strains and the lack of vision between the two and begin to unify themselves by first looking at me and knowing that they were built just like me, they would understand the power that lies inside of that union. So I'm here to pray over your marriages. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. And I want you to lay, grab hands and lay everything at the feet of him. Jesus. Lay every frustration, lay every strain, lay every aggravation, lay every evil thought that you have about your spouse Hallelujah. at the feet of the king today. Don't act like you ain't wanting to kill them. <laughs> Watch. There's been times that God wanted to as well. But in his covenant love, he didn't. You, you, you see that covenant love, man? Guys, I'm, I'm just really, I'm so sick of us. Our marriages have looked a lot like the church, but it's time for our marriages to start looking a lot like the kingdom. Because church has left people coming in with an emotional feeling and left them leaving empty. Church has left people coming in, getting all excited and hyped up, but it's left them broken. It hasn't fixed the situation. It hasn't repaired them. It hasn't encouraged them. It hasn't uplifted them. And that's the same way we've allowed our marriages to take the shape of. It's a lot of the ways like the church, but it's time that we shift this thing to a kingdom. Grab them tighter than you've ever grabbed them before. If they're not here with you, you begin to embrace them in your spirit. I believe in this moment. I believe in this moment. I believe in the power of this moment. I believe that, this, that nothing would make God happier than to see you succeed not just get by but he says we're more than overcomers we're more than conquerors hallelujah 
I want to challenge you to do something if you've never done it before. I'm going to pray. And I believe everybody in here is going to pray. And those of you back there that aren't married, or uh, it, it, how about lift your hands, stretch it to these that are up here, and, and begin to speak into their life. But I want, you to, I want you to open your mouth and begin to declare something over your spouse. I want you to begin to pray and intercede for your spouse. Begin to speak life into them. If you can do it with your partner a minute ago, if you can do it with the person that was standing next to you, if you can speak encouragement and speak it into your spouse. And let's carry this forward. I believe that God is going to empower something, shift something inside of us right now, that our encouragement doesn't just come when we're locked up in the presence of the Almighty God, but we carry that presence with us when we step over the threshold of these doors and we begin to speak to our spouse and with our spouse with that same spirit. A lot of what we see manifest is a lot of what we've sown. Amen. God, I thank you. Father, I thank you for every man and woman that stands in this place today. I thank you, Father, that this is a divine moment. Father, you have moved heaven and earth out of the way for this moment. God, there were plans made of what would be spoken, of how things would go. Father, there were time uh, restraints to be kept. God, a, a capsule, Father, ways in order of the way that we thought we would do service. But God, you have parted the seas right now. And you have walked couples, God, Father, to this altar because you care about them, God. You have heard their cries. You have seen their tears. You have watched when they've laid on their pillow, God, and begin to wonder if it would ever work out. You have seen the frustration. You have seen how the enemy has tried to manipulate actions and visions and words. Your word says that this is a union, a covenant that's made in the kingdom. God, I declare over every marriage today, God, that it shall live and not die. I declare over every husband that there be a passion rise up inside of the men of this house that they begin to pursue you in a way they have never pursued you that they take their rightful place in the order of the kingdom they begin to establish their voice in their home God they begin to seek you for the direction and the vision of their home God and you disperse an anointing over them God that begins to break the yoke of bondage off their homes God off their wives God off their children God and they begin to cease God the curses that have been established in their life God, I speak over every wife in this place. That she be in covenant with you unlike anything she has ever been. And as her passion begins to stir for the Father in heaven, her passion stirs for the Father of her home. That there's a submission that begins to be surrendered unto the order of the house not that they can be abused not that they can be walked over but God they submit father to the passion of the kingdom to the excitement of possibility to the potential of what lies deep and inside of the both of them in a covenant love I speak to every devil in hell that has come against the marriages of this house. I declare a standard today that shall be different than any other. You have no place and no authority in what God has put together. They haven't just signed a marriage document and used the symbolism of a ring. There was a covenant made. you don't understand a covenant you can fight against but you cannot break it's a covenant that has been bound in the spirit of the heavens and what God has established in his covenant you do not have the authority to break I pray victory over every household in Jesus name 
I pray victory over every husband and wife in Jesus' name. I pray victory over every parent in Jesus' name. Victory over the lives of our children. Our children's lives will be reestablished when the order and the passion of the covenant of the marriage is reestablished in our homes. Hallelujah. May they see the gem that stands next to them. May they see the purpose-filled, potential-filled passion of the kingdom that stands next to them. May they see the development and the creation of God that stands next to them. May we wrestle with the conviction of our spirits when we look at our spouse and attempt to see them in any other way than the image of God. I thank you for victory in this house today. I thank you that love covers a multitude of sins. I pray for over every transgression, every wrongdoing, every foul word that has hurt, that has broken bones of the inside, that has broken the literally that's created wounds in the spirit. I, in Jesus' name, I pray that love now cover a multitude of transgression. I pray that everything that we try to remember of the transgressions of our spouse would be ceased right now under the blood of Jesus. I'm thankful that there's blood on the cross for me. I'm thankful that even in my wickedness and even in my bad decisions and even when I've let my mouth release things that the Spirit did not drive, that there was blood on the cross that was shed to cover my mistakes. I pray every wound that I've created with my mouth would be healed by Jehovah Rapha. I pray every wound that's been created by the mouse of husbands and wives would be mended by the healer. Yes, yes. I pray that everything that we've robbed from them, every area that we've created lack in the lives of our spouse, that Jehovah Jireh would provide. I pray that every war that we've allowed into our home, every time there's been a wickedness of spirit that has tried to come into our household, attach itself to our marriage, to our thoughts, to our actions, and to our ways. For every time we have permitted warfare in our house that never should have been allowed, I pray Jehovah Sabe today, the one that wages war for me, I pray you seal our covenant by the same blood that was shed in the covenant with Abraham. I pray you seal our covenant today in the same spirit of the one that was shed on Calvary with Christ the King. And God, without the need of marriage counseling, without the need of us throwing dollars and cents, and every counselor, and every psychologist, and every doggone pill that this world has to offer, that today we stand before the counselor of the kingdom and we receive the healing of the Father today. God, I declare it in Jesus' name. May marriages be healed in Jesus' name. We reclaim them for the kingdom and we thank you for it, Father. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody thinking today that there's healing in your marriage. There's healing in your home. There's healing in your spouse. There's healing in your mind. Healing in your words. Healing in your spirit. There's healing today. And we thank you for it, God. Hallelujah. 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 Just stay where you're at. I'm going to pray for you. Man, I can't preach now. But I just want to bless you. If you're a first-time guest, I encourage you to come back and see us. And um, I believe in the power and the authority of the Word. I believe in the importance of the Word. 
word means a ton to me and so I encourage you to come back and sit under the word but I'm going to tell you what man we change marriages we'll change the climate of our community what good is it man if we talk about hope and we talk about dreams and we talk about living if we can't reach out and put on display the hope of the kingdom inside the relationships of our of our church I want people to be able to look upon you and your spouse and say I don't know how they do it but I want something like that I don't know how they've been able to reach the things they've been able to reach I don't know how they've been able to walk through the adversity they've been able to walk through but I want a marriage like that Father I pray I pray that be the case I pray that we represent you in all that we do we represent you in our relationships we represent you God in our marriages we represent you in how we talk to one another how we speak to our spouse may we look upon our spouse with the same faith and expectation and belief of the kingdom that you look in us may we invest in them because we know they're worth the investment and God I believe that we will transform more than anything we can do with candy and flowers, more than anything we can do with a night out on the town, let us become the men and women of the kingdom that we need to be in our homes. God, I thank you. I pray you keep them, you cover them, and I pray because I know the enemy will still continue to try to war after them and divide them, that there will be a strength and a wisdom that rises up inside of them that will walk them through every fiery storm that the enemy can throw at them. May they walk by faith and not by sight. God, I thank you for that. Keep them covered by your grace, protected by your anointing, God, and walking in the authority of the kingdom to change the lives of those around them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I love y'all. You have been listening to the Rejuvenate Church broadcast. If you shared in today's service with us, visit us at www.rejuvenatechurch.com and send us a message. We would love to hear from you. Rejuvenate Church invites you to be our guest if you're in the upstate of South Carolina. We are located in Anderson, South Carolina, inside the Anderson Mall across from Books A Million. Our service times are Sundays at 1045 a.m., and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. For up-to-date information, visit our website or connect with us on social media. We are found on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Pastor Jason Wilson and Rejuvenate Church desire to bridge the gap that divides race, age, and economic status. We are transforming culture by engaging and shaping men and women through relationships and positive kingdom influences. Thank you for listening. We look forward to the opportunity to share with you again at Rejuvenate Church.